It is. I cast your freaking awesome replays. And down here in the bottom left hand side, I don't know why we're kind of neighing the intros, but we are. It's Entero. Wait, this, this fucking overlay sucks. What am I doing casting on this overlay? Fuck that. <laughs> Give us a second, boys and girls. I've been enjoying coaching on the default overlay lately. Uh, let's go back to game heart. I'm like... That thing, that, that's that's not a nice one. Let's, let's give it another go, shall we? Give it another go. Yet again, another smooth start to the show. And here we go. Down here in the bottom left-hand side in the red, the Protoss player, it is Entaro Adun. And up here in the top right in the blue, it is Ellison X. Now, if you are wondering if Ellison is a bit of a geek bit of a nerd. No, you can tell not because there's an X on the end of the name, which automatically means Ellison is very cool. Very cool. For you guys who don't know, uh, if you put two or three X's next to your name, it makes you even cooler. So uh, Ellison definitely at least level one of cool. Meanwhile, Entero Adun, bit of a lore nerd. Has some fucking Protoss language as the name. Probably a cuck. But uh, we'll, we'll watch, we won't judge. We won't judge too early. Uh, we'll see exactly how this one goes. Now, keep in mind, guys, the challenge for this week was government refineries. The government has come in, they've said, we don't trust individual public profit motivated business. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take over the industry. We're gonna, we're gonna fucking take it over. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just make the gas industry more efficient than it's ever been before. You're allowed to mine with a single worker from each gas. A whole one. A whole one worker. Can you fucking believe it? Isn't that amazing? Uh, we're gonna keep this replay running for just a second. Let me just fucking lower those sound settings a little bit. That's a little bit deafening, isn't it? There we go. And uh, we will continue that replay. But uh, yeah, you're only allowed to mine with one worker from each gas. Uh, so good luck fucking getting anything done with that beautiful government efficiency. And let's see exactly how the players play around it. Now, if you boys and girls want to get your replays in for next week, remember the challenge is in the rear with the gear. You may only attack by counterattacking and backstabbing your opponent, not attacking their army front on. Send submissions to eonblue95 at gmail.com as attachment and only Izufar as the title of the email. And as I say that, I look over at it and I'm like, yeah, I may have written it twice. Hey, I may have may have written it twice. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go edit command, Izufar, and we're going to copy paste it. And that should work. So now the Izufar command in chat is just gonna say current icy fire challenge once. There we go. So that's gonna be a good challenge. Of course, you can still defend front on uh, attacks, but you absolutely, when you're attacking, need to be avoiding their army and trying to just attack from behind, run in where their army isn't, hit their mineral lines, all that sort of jazz. And uh, I think we figured out who's to playing the challenge. As you can see, guys, look at the amazing worker rights these drones have working for the government. They start at 10 a.m., they finish at 3 p.m., and really, you know, there's no rush on when the work gets done. Yeah, we want ling speed sometime today, but don't worry, take your time. Take your time. You, uh, uh. They also take, of course, three months of holiday per year. So, nice efficiency there. Meanwhile, on the other side, Entero are done, clearly not playing the challenge. Has got this terrible, disgusting, abusive worker rights. Look at them, they're slaving all day. 6 in the morning till fucking 11 p.m. at night. They have no rights, no breaks, no smokos. Just non-stop production. It's it's a callous, heartless machine that actually gets shit done. So, uh, Entero are done here. Oh, one lady with her laser frisbee does decide. Decapitating a Zergling will probably send a clear message. The other Zerglings, they do actually get the message. Normally, Zerglings aren't the brightest. Oh, no, they don't. They're going to turn around and fight. She says, get fucked, you little runts. And uh, her friend does come along, and that's a couple of dead, bitey boys. They got a little bit over-eager. They bruised her a little bit. Her shins are a little bit bloody. They, they, they nibbled on her a little bit. Maybe she's missing a little toe. But uh, realistically, she's still a very present threat. A couple more bitey boys coming out. Big Mama Queen starts throwing her knitting needles. One of them does catch this lady in the eye. She says, fuck, that hurts. 
It's okay though, you only really need one eye to aim a laser frisbee anyway, it's all good. But uh, you know, we, we force out some lings, for now let's, let, let's back the fuck off. Let's get some resonating glaives behind this, going up to four gateways. Gonna add a fifth gateway at the front. Pretty good probe production from Entero are done so far, it's about equal on the workers, and that third base still not finished. For Ellison X, who's just enjoying this absolutely delicious gas income, look at it! Oh my! Has even taken both gases on the natural and is mining gas marginally faster than a person who's still only mining from one extractor in an actual efficient privately managed and run system. Fucking don't at me about your labor unions and your fucking worker rights by the way. Just keep in mind, this show is all about sending a political message for all of you whiners who think that we should treat people like humans and maybe actually run things, you know, nicely for the workers rather than just maximizing production and pollution. You're wrong, and my political message in this cast is totally accurate. I, I stand by it. I believe truly that we should be utilizing workers as a resource more and more and making sure uh, at least 30% of them die on the job. If that doesn't happen, how can you honestly claim to be efficient or to be getting shit done? I don't think you can. Uh, I think you're just a bit, uh, you're lying to yourself, you know, you're deluded. You see, that's what your workplace should look like at the end of a hard day's work. There should be a few dead employees around the place. If they're not, come on, shit's not getting done. So enter row are done, now gonna push across the map, gonna say, look, me probes, a few of them have died mining gas, I've replaced them with new probes at this point, it's time to go fucking murder some of these fucking crazy communist government-owned refinery people over here. This one queen, she says, I'm gonna fight 27 adepts. They say, nah, chop her in half. That drone stands there, don't know what he was thinking, but uh, he's dead. So yeah, I think he's thinking I'm dead now. Uh, shit, heaven isn't as cool as I thought it was. The Zerg heaven is basically just a big spawning pool of viscous fluid. It's it's not really that exciting. There's no deliverance or anything. It's just, you're just a fucking lava floating in a pool of goo. It's, it's really not that great. The Zerg afterlife, kind of shit. Um, these ladies just fucking shading around like a bunch of spooky ghosts. This looks like a fucking jump scare movie at this point. It's like, hey, I'm here. Wait, no, I'm here. By the way, you're all fucking dead. Haha. <laughs> um, Ellison's economy, I believe, has gone to Dicktown. It's definitely most of the way there. Oh, the ladies teleport again. It's, it's definitely Dicktown at this point. They say, I don't know if you wanted to go to Dicktown, but you're here now. I hope you enjoy your complete and utter lack of the economy. Where, where, oh, what, what? Oh, look, look, it's a scary thing. We're here, we're here. <laughs> nah, we're, we're down here now. <laughs> Get fucked. Uh -huh. Ellison at this point has a vein throbbing on the forehead, a little bit of high blood pressure, and is probably going to go and inflict some grievous bodily harm on the closest Zerg player to them in real life. Ellison taking a little bit of damage there. Casual 32 drones did, did die to the laser frisbee ladies. Uh, I would say it may be a successful attack. But uh, to be fair, the follow-up is more laser frisbee ladies. And I gotta say, once you get enough vomboys together, they do pretty well versus laser frisbee girls. So, I mean, if there's one weakness to adepts, it's that the moment you start vomiting on their pretty shoes, they're like, ah, oh, that's fucking gross. And, you know, they just don't do enough damage for the fucking roach headbutt. The, the roaches headbutt in, and right at the apex of the headbutt is when they projectile vomit on their opponents. So, adepts not really made to deal with that, but archons, immortals on the other hand, those are some units that could do pretty well here. We've got two robos coming up, a couple of archons here, gonna add their big fucking lightning uh, storm of death. Not sure if they've got that ability out of the campaign intro yet where you can grab an ultralisk apparently by the tusks and then self-destruct and fucking teleport it to oblivion or some shit. Still not 100% sure what was happening in that video, but it looked pretty cool, didn't it? Uh, a bit of lightning came out of that Archon. That's a fucking lot of Adepts and Archons. I think right now, Ellison's underwear are a little bit of a mess. I think we might be looking at some shit-stained panties because this right here is a pretty scary Protoss force. Ellison's economy has already been a 
little bit uh, destroyed. And I don't think Ellison wants to go back to Dicktown. He's managed to find a way out. He's got a train back to regular town. He's like, nah, can can we hang out here? And Taroa Dunn's like, nah, I'd like to take you there again. I think it was fun the first time. Let's repeat that journey. Goes in and just fucking clicks the hatch and recalls out. Says, I know what makes Zerg players angry. I know what gives them serious fucking uh, bodily issues. I'm talking, I'm talking heart attacks. I'm talking rage problems. I'm talking you need some anger management classes. And it's having your base sniped and then the opponent's army to just recall out of there. Now, luckily for the Zerg, the Immortals, the one counter to the Vomboys, the, uh, the, the equivalent of the fucking paper bag on the airplane. There's only two of them out. There's two more on the way right now, but I don't know if that's going to be enough. That's a lot of fucking roaches right there. They're going to come forward on this third base and Tero are done up against the Vomboy Revenge. Ellison's like, fuck you. You've been taking me to Dicktown. It's time for my revenge. Just goes in, backs out, doesn't want to fight those immortals yet. The probes run off the line, immediately get whipped back to work by their capitalist masters. You say, what the fuck do you think you're doing? They say, well, it was a war zone. We thought maybe we should pull out to, to, to preserve ourselves. The fucking workers are like, that's it. No more breaks for you shitheads. How dare you prioritize your own life over the fucking harvesting of more resources for the war effort, you shitheads. So these probes now, most of them have had a few lashes. They've got infections in the wounds on their back. But, uh, you know, it's all, all, all good for the Protoss war machine. Um, that, speaking of this one, these probes, of course, they wanted to run away, but they knew they would also get punished if they did. So they stood their ground, mined an extra six minerals, and uh, got fucked in the process. Oh, fuck me, the roaches jump on top. That's a lot of immortals. It's four and two Archons, but these Archons are a little bit behind. Look at this fucking brutal fight. Oh, God. The fucking Vomboys. The Vomboys are going to do it. Oh, my God. The superpowered Protoss unit's not superpowered enough. Oh, no. These two immortals, apparently not the brightest fucking uh, penny in the bunch, are they? No, they're the deadest fucking immortals. You lucky shit, <laughs> says Entero. <laughs> are done. And... Uh, taps out there after uh, 11 minutes straight of non-stop laser frisbees. <laughs> Fucking fantastic game there. Uh, Ellison, despite brutally handicapping themselves by only having one worker on each of these fucking gas geysers the entire game. This one, and the worker even fucking died, manages to hang on against the mass adept. Uh... Uh, I'm going to give a tip out there. Enter Odon, if you're watching, here's, here's a tip. Um, after you build <laughs> Adepts, <laughs> try to focus on building Immortals. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, Mass Adept uh, versus Mass Immortal. Uh, mass, mass Roach, I mean. It's, it's, it, it's, uh, it's not the best. It's kind of like building Colossi against Mutalisks. You, you should probably stop and build something else. Um, always entertaining to see a Zerg lose 32 drones, get knocked back to the 20s against a two-base Protoss, and then bounce back and win with the Vomboy. The game time maneuver, the Roach headbutt, always a classic move. Uh, bringing back those games from the brink. I love it. I love it. I am confirmed as a bourgeois boot licker. Not just a boot licker, a boot polisher as well. Because I'm just saying there should be people whose job it is to polish the boots of my class. I just think, you know, maybe there should be different casts of people who, due to their own inherent biology, uh, have different places in society. I think it's proven by science. Uh, I can measure your skull and I can tell you right now where you belong in the social caste system as well. Just let me know, Ragno. I can do that for you. It's a very defined science. I've actually already... Um, found the predestination of many uh, criminals in our society simply by measuring their craniums. So if anyone, I mean, at the moment, it's the, the liberal uh, cuck media that doesn't want to embrace this fact, that this is actually a, a very real piece of science. It's strong evidence. But uh, no, everyone's saying, oh, you can't measure people's skulls to figure out if they're criminals or they're never allowed to do anything other than polish rich people's shoes. And I say... Well, you're wrong because science has proven it, but they don't listen. Uh, and it's all about the fake news, to be honest. But fake news aside, boys and girls, let's talk about this next game. We're going to go down here and in the bottom right, in the red, the Terran player 
It is rocks. And up here in the top left hand side, in the blue, it's Jezza. Jezza. Jezza's going for a gas first, wants to get some very nice tech opening going. Meanwhile, Rox is like, you know what's really cool? It's uh, building a couple of barracks in your natural. <laughs> I uh, believe in, you know, strategy. I uh, believe in pure skill winning games. Also, I'm going to do the cheesiest fucking all in I can think of. <laughs> You know when someone's fucking proxying their barracks in your natural that they snigger like that, right? It's it's a hundred percent a fact. They they're going hey, hey. It's it's the beavers and butthead of strategies right here. But Jezza apparently is a fucking wizard. Okay, to be real, that wasn't to scout. Has seen the barracks. Don't put the nexus. Oh my god, Jezza's waiting to put the nexus down. No, pay attention. There's a fucking barracks that. What are you doing, Jezza? You psychopath. <laughs> I don't think Jez has noticed. There's a fucking barracks next to you, you psycho. <laughs> Jez is just chilling, just doing the build. Is like, nah, government's taken over the refineries. We're only allowed one probe on each gas. It's fine. By the, what's that? Oh, what? What is this? <laughs> the probe finally fucking decides to take the blinders off. Apparently this probe used to get a little bit too excited. It would be on work order. And what would happen is it would see literally fucking anything on the map. A shiny crystal like over here. And it would be like, oh, fucking it's a crystal. And it would just go stare at it. So thankfully, thankfully the government have designed um, some nice. They've said, look, we can help you out. Get your work done. You've got some blinders like a fucking horse drawing a carriage. And that way there's no distractions. Uh, unfortunately, it also means you've got tunnel vision as fuck awareness of what's going on around you. Thankfully though, Jezza has finally figured out what's happening. He's going, you know what? Mass shield batteries and uh, no, let's not build any cannons. Just shield batteries and a probe should defend okay, I think. Yeah, seems like a good call. No worries. Jezza, Jezza goes back to my... Jezza's like, yeah, I don't need anything else. Just three shield batteries and no units. <laughs> okay. Two, two stalkers do start up. And now it's 16 probes versus one fucker with a jetpack, a backpack filled with fucking pingers, and two fucking handguns. If this story isn't going to end badly, then I don't know what will. Look at him. He's like, yeah, let's fucking go. Oh, let's fucking go. Let's fight. Now, one probe, though, in range of the shield battery says, dude, I can fight his all day. Hey, you can't hurt me. He says, that's fine, mate. I got a backpack filled with fucking drugs. I'm going to take some of these pills. They're going to be fucking good, man. Oh, oh, better go fucking. Let's just go take some pills. All right. So he's going. He's unzipping his backpack. We'll go take a look at him. He did take a bit of a bruising. But, uh, oh shit, he's taking the drugs and they're fucking transforming his hit point bar back to full. Jesus Christ. Look at this rave boy. And a couple more ravers coming out as well. Okay, mostly marines coming out. A mixture of marines and reapers queued up here for Rox. Back at home, Rox uh, doesn't want to make an orbital command center. Is going to go for the factory transition. All right, has a bunker contained, some reapers. And Jez is like, you know what? I better build some cannons. Oh, fuck me. A couple of these fucking psychopaths jumping in me base. Uh, thankfully, shield batteries are pretty fucking good. A couple of stalkers gonna come back. They're gonna say, get out of me base, you dickhead. Stop, stop harassing. Oh, they killed a little Probius, the fuckers. But one of the Reapers will pay with his life. That's the tax for taking down some of Jezza's probes in this game. And you know what? A cannon on either side. A firm clutch of stalkers. I think Jezza here, despite having the government refineries, is doing quite okay. Uh, did, of course, lose the one worker on this gas. Now, remember, guys, it's a government-owned refinery. So Jezza had to go through the proper six-month check period where the uh, refinery basically didn't operate just to make sure they found the right person for the job, someone who's ready to handle the stress of working four hours a day with three lunch breaks. It's pretty tough, but this probe managed to get the job. Uh, yeah, at the same time, we've got 25 probes doing the work of 16. This is definitely a government-involved industry. We're talking about real, organized fucking government utilities. They're managing these resources better than I ever possibly could. It is just incredible. The level of fucking efficiency they get out of each employee. I mean, Elon Musk has something to learn from this. Honestly, if they want SpaceX to be truly competitive, if they want us to get to Mars, this is how you do it. Because what could possibly be better than 16 people doing 16 people's jobs? It's 26 people doing 16 people's jobs. That's just a science fact. Elon Musk, 
You've got to fucking get in here and learn from the real fucking industrial revolution people over here. This here is the 21st century, and it's time to get up to date, you psychopath. Meanwhile, the other side of the map, Rox has decided to make an orbital command center. Did take about five minutes into the game to make it, but you know what? Has made it, has a little radar dish. The SCVs now have satellite TV. I'm down with it. It's going to go a couple starports as well, and that gets me a little bit excited because I feel like Rox might make some funky units. But uh, for now, I guess a bit more focused on the bunker contained, so all right, why not? We've got Banshees, we've got Marines, even a goddamned expansion. Hot damn. This game is getting mighty interesting. Uh, a pack of Zealots and Stalkers here. They're still trying to defend. These Reapers have just been jumping up and down, jumping away, getting out of there. I do have a feeling like we're about to see some sort of clash. That's a lot of Zealots. That's, that's a few Stalkers. And these are unupgraded Marines, even with, even with a couple bunkers. Mm, we might see Protoss try to break out, but uh-oh. A fucking Prism is on the way. All right. What do you got for me, Jezza? Are you gonna... Are we going to see the prism ferry the units out of the base? I want to see some sexy moves. What, what, oh, oh, what's it doing with a Twilight Council as well? The prism's just gonna float there for a little bit. First Banshee is coming across the map. We've got a Rando Cyclone, a Medivac, a Marauder, a Stim Upgrade. Oh, this one, Marauder. I don't know if you guys know the lore, but Marauders are actually... Uh, ex-cons. That's, that's the whole law behind them. That one actually found himself in prison again. He violated paroles. So they had to lock him up for a few days, but they lifted the barracks. They've said, all right, the door's open. You can come out and sacrifice your life. We'll, we'll waive the sentence, buddy. No worries. Um, oh my. Is that eight, eight probes in a war prism? But oh no, now you've only got 13 workers doing 10's job. Oh, it's okay. Some of the mineral patches ran out. 18 doing 10 job. They're keeping the same efficient ratio. I like it. There's clearly an organized system in place to optimize the efficiency here for this Protoss player. Jezza, going to ferry these probes over to the corner of the map. Is like, you know what? We're, we're just going to fucking unload here. Maybe we'll take a little cheeky base. Let's see. Oh, there we go. These fucking pros are like, we need... We need more probes. I don't think eight's enough to mine from this base. We need at least 36. One for each gas and 20 uh, and 34 for the minerals, probably. Oh, no. Jezza's told the workers to mine. Oh, no. Jezza. The, the, the Nexus isn't done. The Nexus isn't done. They're going to fucking go home, mate. No. You're going to give it up. you got to send them back. Oh, fuck me. Just like the trusty government employees they are, they don't even question the, the, the orders, they just do it. It doesn't matter how illogical or brain dead it is, but you know what, Jez is like, fuck, I think we need to come down and save them. Oh, turns him around at the last second. Just a single one of them is like, nah, I'm going to still return these minerals. Rox is like, what the fuck is that probe doing, mate? It's, what, what are you, oi, oi, get back here, get back here. I got a couple of me fucking rocket cars and they're going to come and fight you. Get back here, you dickhead. This probe is like, don't worry. I'll lead you to all of my friends so you can not just kill me. You can also kill all of me friends and family. My kids are over there. If I'm going to die, they sure as hell better die. Come on. Come on. Come kill little Barry and fucking Reggie over here. There's me wife. There's me mate, Carl. Um, you can fucking kill them all now. The Cyclone's a little bit confused as to why they're being offered this opportunity. They're going to start a brutal massacre. A few of the kids do escape. But uh, still a fucking bloody picture. Meanwhile, over here, Jez is like, you know what? You know what's good against a contain when the bunkers are down here? You walk past and you counterattack with 30 fucking zealots. They don't even have any Nikes. These are fucking shoeless zealots right now. Look at these fucking communist fucking government-owned people over here. The government's decided apparently shoes aren't important for the fucking zealots. No, 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 no. We just need one worker on each gas geyser. So we're going to see the most incredible bust of all time here as those zealots decide to have a dance party on that ramp. The SCVs deciding not to repair. They say, we should probably give you a chance to get some damage done. What's auto repair anyway? <laughs> the zealots allowed to waltz right on into that base and these fucking cyclones are realizing that they may indeed be in Dicktown. Going to be a bit of ring around the rosy here for this cyclone trying to evade the zealots. The zealots still haven't figured out how to walk into the mineral line and kill all the SCVs. These drilly boys still standing there looking at each other like a bunch of dumbasses. The zealots are like, yeah, we're going to kill yous now. But the Banshee slowly starting to clear it up. Um, clicking on the command center, always the best thing to do in this scenario. The big 
1500 hit point building with one armor that can lift off the prime target here for Jezza. Come on, Jezza, you can do it. Don't kill the SCVs. Get the commands out of the Banshees. Can't do it. Oh, fuck me. The Stalkers have come in. The Banshees have Cloak. Now all you're gonna do is press the cloak button. You just no. <laughs> Rocks is like fuck. I didn't press the cloak button. I forgot to do it. I'm gonna have to counter bust yeah. Four stalkers, no match for this number of marauders at home. The zealots are gonna kill literally fucking everything. Five banshees queued up on one starport there. These two drilly boys, look at that. They're repairing each other and the medevacs healing them. That zealot's like Jesus. Can you just fucking die, mate? A couple of sentries come in. Oh, the force field's gonna be good. And Rox just leaves the game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> fucking Jezza with the fucking amazing government refineries. Fucking, I'm talking about a sick centralized government run industry there. Takes that game out. Flawless victory. Special shout out to Reginald the Probe who decided to lead the pair of Cyclones to his family and friends. What a fucking traitor. That guy, ugh. there's always that one traitorous cunt, right? In the movie. And he's like, oh, nah, you, you're going to make me, you're going to make me rich and powerful if I fucking uh, am the traitor to me old family and friends. <laughs> and the bad guy's like, yeah, sure. I definitely won't kill you afterwards. They say with the most psychotic stare, looking them right in the eye. And there's always the dumb fucker who's like, nah, okay, yeah, come and kill me family. Come on, buddy. Brings them over, murders the whole family, goes, cool, where's me suitcase of money? And the bad guy goes, are you fucking stupid? And just shoots him in the head. It's like the fucking coked up colleague uh, with the fucking shoulder length hair and the beard in, in the first Die Hard movie. And he's like, no, I'm a negotiator. I'm going to negotiate with these guys. Don't worry, don't worry, Molly. I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort this out. Don't worry, yeah, yeah. And he's like, fucking, he's wiping the coke off his nose while trying to fucking, fucking make a deal with Snape. And Severus Snape's like, yeah, sure, buddy. I'll totally fucking not just shoot you in the face right after I get what I want from you. And that's why, guys, you don't take cocaine while negotiating with Professor Snape. He's in Slytherin. He's a bit of a dickhead. Fucking clear science facts. I don't know how people still don't get this. Jesus Christ. Seeker, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub, dude. NATO Flex with the one year resub. I have an MS dinner for two and a rose petal covered table. Let's celebrate. 